Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a mini rail fence table runner. The rail fence pattern, it's very simple. It's made with four fabrics usually, and there's just four strips here. When you put blocks in a quilt, you get the effect of the split rail fence. You see that zigzag running down the quilt. Now, this is a great size block for a big quilt, but for a table runner, we wanna shrink those blocks down so we can still see that zigzag effect. I have some really pretty French general fabrics. They're nice dark reds and creams, and I usually use two lights and two darks, and I just love this print. That'll make a good light. This looks really good with it, and the scales are different. Those will look good. We've got this paisley here that's kind of got some pink. That will match. Then we'll use this nice big red print here. So let's go with those four fabrics. What you need for the patchwork is you need a quarter yard of four different prints. And you can use regular quarters like I have, or you can use fat quarters. So I'm gonna line all these up. I'm just gonna stack them up because I can cut eight layers all at once. If you only wanna cut four layers or two layers, that's fine as well. So I'm gonna stack these up and I'm gonna put my ruler on here and get a nice starting spot. And I like to hold the plastic ruler down with a weight. I've got a five pound weight here and if I set that at the far end, it keeps it from sliding while I cut. We are going to cut these, cut these quarters into one and five eighths inches wide here. So I know it's an odd measurement, but you only have to do it four times. So I'm gonna do it one and five eighths and cut a strip. Now we're going to take all of these strips right over to the sewing machine. Take the two darker strips here. We're gonna take these two strips. They're already laying right sides together. So I'm just gonna pick them up like this and shake it out. So I've got two long strips and I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch right along the edge here. And it goes pretty fast. Just be careful not to stretch either one. Now I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to finger press to the right. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm just gonna pull it open with the with kind of the heels of my hand here and draw my finger right down that seam. This gets it nice and flat and makes it really easy to iron afterwards. Okay, the next two pieces are gonna be in this order. So I'm gonna put these right sides together. Take these two here. And we'll stitch these. Same thing with this set. We're going to still want to finger press to the right. Now we're going to sew these two together. So I'm going to put these right sides together and just stitch along this edge. Because they're so skinny, it's really easy to get them lined up and get them perfectly accurate. We also want to finger press this seam, same direction. All of them are going the same way. They're all going to my right here. Now take the rest of your strips and make a total of four of these strip units. Once those are done, we need to iron them up. So they're already finger pressed, so they're pretty, pretty flat. But I like to smooth it out with my hands and then get a straight edge. I have this four foot metal ruler and then I can make sure that this is nice and straight and lined up against the ruler. So I'm gonna use a dry iron first, smoothing it down with my hand. Once it feels nice and flat, then I'm gonna use the steam. They are all ironed nice and flat. These should come out five inches. And that's what it looks like mine are, five inches. Now we are gonna cut these into five inch squares, but let me show you a time-saving trick. You can stack these up and cut them all at once. 
So I'm going to stack them up, but I'm going to stagger them a little so I don't get too much bulk right where the seam allowances are. So this, this way the seam allowances are not on top of themselves, they're moved a little bit, and I can make all the cuts at once. Okay, we've got a nice clean cut at the beginning here, so I'm gonna move the ruler over five inches, and I'm again going to use my weight here to help hold this in place. So when we do this cut, there's our blocks, and we've got four of them cut all at once. We need 30 blocks for the runner. So it's going to be three blocks wide and 10 blocks long. Now for my rail fence, the blocks only get turned two ways. I'd like to think of the dark color as the prominent color. So the dark color is either gonna go on the right or the top every time. And we're just gonna alternate till we get the whole thing laid out. There's the whole runner. Now the easiest way to sew this together is just to do three separate rows. So I'm going to pick up the first row, take it right to the machine. That's the exact way that they were stacked up over on the table. So this piece, this block here is gonna be the far right, the far right end of the row. So I'm gonna flip this upside down, flip that guy over and that guy over, and I'm gonna sew these together and then I'll just keep adding pieces to the right as I go. Now look, they fit together perfectly. They're exactly the same size. There's no seams to match. We just simply stitch right down there. Now we will open it up and we will add this piece. There's the first row. Now I'm going to finger press all these seams away from the block that has the seams going this way. So this one is going to go towards that long block. And this one's gonna to go towards a long block. Think of always pressing those seams toward the long block. That's the way they wanna go anyway because there's a bunch of seam allowances here. So we'll do that for this whole row and we'll do the same thing for the next row. And then when we go to put our rows together, our intersections right here will all be going different directions and they will nest really easily so we can get those rows stitched together. The patchwork top is all done and I think it needs some borders. So we're gonna go back to the retail store and I wanna do a small light border and then I wanna do a bigger, one of these bigger florals on the outside border. So this is the same section we were in earlier a lot of these lights would work, but I think I'm gonna do this because it's got a little bit different color background, so it won't look exactly the same as that because it lines up against that fabric a couple times around the edge here, that'll look good. And then I'm gonna go back to this big floral for the outside and we'll do about a two and a half inch border of this. For the first border, I'm just going to cut four more strips at one and five eighths inches and I'm going to stitch it all the way around the outside of the runner. I took all of my border pieces and I stitched them into one really long piece. Now we're gonna take this over to the runner top and I'll show you the best way to put them on. We want the border to be exactly the same length as the runner. So I'm going to put it in the middle here, not right on the edge, in the middle, just so I can make sure I have it the right length. And I'm just going to smooth it down And then when I get to the end, I'm going to cut it. The easiest way to cut this is to fold it right there. And then you know you've got a nice straight line. So I can hold this and snip just like this. And I actually need another border the same length, so I'm just gonna feed this back down here, make sure it's smooth, and cut this end here. Then I'm going to pin these borders on each of the long sides and stitch them on. Now the borders are stitched on and I know they're the right length. It's, it's somewhat easy to stretch either the patchwork or the border when you're sewing it on. And then your runner will not lay flat. When we measure first and stitch on, we know that it's gonna be exactly the right length. Especially, that's especially important when you're sewing a border to patchwork. When we put our next border on, it's not as important because we don't have a lot of seams in there. All right, it's ironed nice and flat and we're ready for a second border. This is the fabric that we're gonna use for that second border. That's gonna look really good. But here's the thing. 
I have about twice as much fabric as I need for the back because this is folded. Now I don't want to put a seam in this fabric because it's way too pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut your borders off of your backing. So I'm going to get this ironed up and then I'll show you what to do. The fabric is all ironed up now. So this is the way it came off of the bolt. But I'm going to want to cut my borders parallel to the selvages here. So I'm just going to refold this and I'm going to cut four border pieces that are two and a half inches wide. So I've got it folded and I'm gonna lay the fold right along one of my lines that's on my cutting board here. And we're gonna cut away the selvage because the selvage is always kind of wrinkled up. And we'll cut four pieces two and a half inches wide. That will make a nice border around the runner and we will still have plenty left over for a backing. So we can, we can either put that on the long arm, it's big enough to fit on the long arm, or we can use the flip method, or whatever method we want, we've got plenty of back. That outside border is all stitched on and the runner is ironed really flat. I like to just iron it as flat as I can possibly get it. Now I've got the quilt sandwich laid out here. So we've got the backing, the batting, and the top, and I'm gonna pin it all over and then I'm gonna quilt it just in the ditch and then add some binding. I have the mini rail fence runner all done. It turned out really nice. This is a fun, fast project. So I've got the binding on. The binding is the same fabric that I used on the border and the back. And it's quilted in the ditch around the borders and between the squares. Here, you might be able to see it from this side a little better. So it's, it's very, very simple quilting. Of course, you could do fancier stuff if you want. You could even put it on the long arm. Now, the fabrics, I know I said these were French General, and this one is French General. These other three are from a group called Three Sisters. It's another Moda collection. Now, this particular runner, it turned out 20 by 50, and this would look good in so many different kinds of fabrics. You wouldn't have to do just florals. So I made another one because it does go really fast. And this is all Kansas Trouble fabrics. These are Civil War style, and you can see that prominent rail going through there. Again, simple quilting, a very fast project. Thanks for watching our video today on how to make the rail fence runner. Now, it's time for another giveaway. This is a pattern that I designed, it's called Mirage. I used K Facet Prints and Grunge. It's got a nice feathery print on the back side. It's about 56 by 56 inches. Very easy to enter. Just click the link that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. Good luck. Now, if you don't wanna miss any of our upcoming tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting.